it's a bit unique because I'd just come off a serious injury and I was actually just feeling lucky to be there. Uh, the, my career started in 2001. I was going pretty good 2003. Then I had a bad injury. Then I was out for eight months and then I was lucky to make the Olympic team. So for me personally, I was just happy to be there. Uh, I was quietly confident um, because of the personnel we had in that team and, and the culture that we had as a group at that stage. Um, we had a very good coach, Barry Dancer, who was all about the team. Uh, he was guiding us perfectly. Uh, the team itself were quite young, uh, were very, very fit. I knew we were the fittest team in the world. And we had some great leaders who sort of led from the front and um, the younger guys and the, everyone else just followed. So the culture around the group was exceptional. Um, but yeah, it was my first Olympic Games and I just didn't know what was going to happen in the press conferences and with the Australian uh, reporters, they all, that, all say, you know, you were the bridesmaid so many times, you've never won uh, Olympic goals. And I, I just answer, look, yeah, that's true, but I had never been to Olympics. So this is my first one. I'm going to give it my best shot. And um, yeah, it was just, uh, well, that whole Olympics for me was a dream come true. When you score a hat-trick in the first game, your confidence is up. And I guess my attitude back then playing hockey was like, just go for it. I was young, I was fit. I just thought, you know, go for it. No one really knew me too well. So, um, and I knew them pretty well but from watching them. So I thought I've got a bit of advantage here. And I, I thought I'm in pretty good form. So I'm just going to just keep going and see, see what can happen. Um, but yeah, during that tournament, we had some ups and downs. Like... Uh, the first game, we beat New Zealand 5-1 or 5-2, I think. And then we just drew with Argentina in the second game. We just beat India in the last 10 seconds of the game. Uh, and then the last pool round, like you said, we lost 2-1 to Holland. I remember after that uh, game, it sort of gave me a bit of confidence, personally, before we had the team meeting. Uh, because we played really well. We hit the post like three or four times. They had a couple of corners and scored a couple of goals. It's, we had the much better of a play. Um, and then we had the team meeting and Barry Dancer uh, come on and he said exactly what I was thinking. It was like, you know, we actually played pretty good and he showed us the, the points of the goal shots, our goal shots to their goal shots. And after looking at it, I was like, yeah, if we play them, them again, you know, we've got a really good chance. So... That just sort of gave me a little bit of confidence that if we do come up against the Dutch, uh, who had previously won the last two Olympics before that and had arguably the best player in the world turned to Neuer on that team and a, and a great penalty corner threat like Tak Takma, I still believe that, you know, we could beat them, but just their confidence was, you know, they're so confident that they can come out and turn it on. But, uh, yeah, we changed that in the final, thankfully. So I remember walking in the tunnel in the change rooms thinking, this is unbelievable. We've played so well. We've had 10 goal shots and they go down and have, I think they have one corner and one goal shot. We're one nil down at half time. I was thinking if they get another corner and put a, put a corner in, it's game over. But um, once we sat down in the change room, Barry Dancer said, look, we're playing really well and we have not lost a second half performance for the last 30 something games we've played. And I was like, wow, I, I didn't know if it was true or not, but, but I believed that at the time. I still don't know if it's true. I, I think it was. They but said that the right, at the right gave moment. Gave me confidence that we're going to run over them. I knew they were struggling. I knew they weren't as fit as us. I just hoped that we had a few chances and get, have a bit of luck go our way. We had no luck in that first half. And I've watched the game a couple of times since then, um, just recently, actually, because I had to do a couple of talks about it. And, Geez, we dominated that game from the start to the finish. And if we didn't win that game, yeah, well, we're never going to win one. Brent Livermore made an unbelievable pass to me. And I hung on a stick out one-handed and made a back stick trap, passed it to Travis Brooks, who scored pretty close to baseline. It was a pretty good shot. So... Just those little instances which you practice every single day, um, it worked out right there. I could, I could have easily missed that trap. Um, Travis Brooks could have easily missed that shot. And 
I wouldn't have a gold medal sitting in my cupboard at home here. So um, yeah, those little things that you train every single day, if you really pay attention to them and practice them, they pay off in the big moments. And then, yeah, extra time comes and we get a corner right on the first period of extra time and play out the corner. So someone runs off to the coach, he, he does a call. And the call was that the ball was coming to me. So I was thinking about changing it in the huddle. I was like, hey, maybe we should just flick the ball because I had a couple of opportunities in normal time. I said, maybe let's just flick it and uh, get the ball in the goal. And the, the, the penalty corner guy goes, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> um, but Brent, I think Brent Livermore at the time, I'm pretty sure it was him. So no, Brent or Bevan, one of them said, all right, let's stick to the call. Um, let's just trust the coach. So once he said that, all right, we sort of spread out into our usual positions and the ball came out to me from Brent after he trapped it. The guy was on me a little bit quicker than normal. He was sitting back because I had a couple of opportunities during normal time and he sat back and I flicked him, but he was on me a little bit quicker. So in that split second, I decided to hit the ball. I was thinking, flick it, flick it, flick it. And then I was like, oh no, he's too close. I'm going to have to hit this. And uh, I connected pretty well. Uh, just missed his foot by a centimetre or so in between the keeper's pads up into the goal. And then um, that was it. Celebration time. Yeah, it's quite hard to explain. And one of the words that comes is relief. You feel relief that you've put in all this work or you've, you know, watched when I was 13 years of age, I'd sit at home and watch tapes and tapes of the Australian team or, or Germans or Dutch people. And I'd just, then I'd go out in the backyard and practice. So all that, you just think, oh, yeah, sort of relieved that you've got your, your dream, your end goal, like the biggest goal that you could ever achieve is to win an Olympic game, a Games gold medal. And to do it, that feeling is just, yeah, you know, just so relieved and happy. And just, just not for you, but for your teammates, for all the Australian players that have, you know, played previously that hasn't, didn't get to achieve what we've achieved. It was for them, it was for my family, it was for my friends, it was all the commitments that I've made, all my mates' commitments they made. So it was just real, like, I don't know, it's a, it's a really hard uh, it's really hard to explain, but in the end, it, it was what I dreamed of when I was a little kid, practicing, um, and it just came true. So, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm.